Drake is the best show ever. Okay. <laughs> okay, ready? Wait, wait. Okay. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be super fun because I have my mom here. Hi! And today we are going to be talking about how she told me I was adopted and you know, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to know that I'm adopted. We don't look alike at all. <laughs> we don't? A little bit. <laughs> so the first part of this video is going to be how my mom told me I was adopted and the tactics she used. And in the second part of this video, my mom is going to share some tips on maybe how you can tell your child that they are adopted. And before we start, okay, I wanna say that I'm sorry for the lighting change. I use natural light. Sherry, I'll let you take it away. How did you tell me I was adopted? I guess I never wanted to have a situation where I had to have a sit down talk and chat with Alex about, honey, there's something I need to tell you. You're adopted. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's it really would not have awkward. made any sense since she, we didn't look alike and no one around her looked like her. And it was pretty obvious that maybe she, that wasn't where she came from, whatever. I just happened to find something and I don't know if I actually bought this book or if someone gave it to me or if I got it from the adoption agency. I really don't even know where it came from, but I used a book called When You Were Born in China, a memory book for children adopted from China. It's a pretty lengthy book, but I read through this book lots and lots of times, and I picked out the things that I thought were relevant to kids at certain ages. This book was like Alex's bedtime story book, and I read it to her probably a couple times a week from the time we got home from China because I thought it was important just to ingrain in her um, early on that she was adopted. So I would, we would never have to have that situation. She'd know why she was adopted. This book does a very good job of explaining what happens in China, the one child policy. It talks about abandoning children, but it talks also about how all those people in China loved you when you were little and they took care of you until your family was able to come from wherever they came from to adopt you. So it gives a lot of good background, a lot of what might have happened to you and a good explanation of how this is just a general idea of what happens, but you have your very own story, but it's a story of a lot of little girls in China. So I use this book and do you remember me reading this book to you at all? Not really. That's the <laughs> funny thing. I don't know. That's probably the reason why I don't really remember having a honey you're adopted because it was always you always a, knew a constant thing even though I don't I don't subconsciously remember you okay. reading this to me. Okay. <laughs> but I do when we lived in Celebration our old house I remember I don't know how old I was, but we were sitting on the couch and Sherry pulled this book out and she's like, do you remember when I read this to you? And cause we lived in Ohio for a bit. Um, that's where they're from. So I was like, no, not really. So I think we went over it or something like as I was older. I yeah, know. we did because yeah. it, the book is, let's see how many pages. And the book was written in 1997 and you were born in 96 so we traveled in right. 97 so it was something that was very look at these babies i know it was very contemporaneous blocking me you're blocking my shot Sorry. <laughs> it was very contemporaneous to what was going on at the time but i didn't read the whole book to her every night because a little child is not going to understand some of the things that are in here so it's 42 pages i didn't read 42 pages every single night but i would pick and choose things that i thought were relevant like to sections. somebody who was like a year old or somebody who was two years old or three years old. So I kind of add things in, um, talking about the Chinese economy and how China isn't poor, but it's not a rich country either. And talking about those kinds of things, really a two year old really doesn't care about that. A four year old doesn't care about that. But those were things I would add in as time would go, time went on um, about what things were like in China. But the things that I, I did focus on was um, the actual one child policy. At and, the time. At the time yeah. and the abandonment and how people there loved you and how you know everyone took care of you to make sure you stayed healthy until mm -hmm. your parents could come get you. 
And that's kind of just started from that and then added in. There are a lot of pictures and things in China, mm -hmm. which, you know, again, a three or four year old didn't really care about that. But we did show a lot of the pictures of other little girls from China, pictures inside different orphanages in China. Mm -hmm. So even though they weren't exactly in her orphanage, they were other orphanages. So she could kind of grow up knowing that this was the kind of place where she was for a year. And there were other little girls in orphanages. And I think having the, the shaman reunions over the years yeah. helped with that also uh, because everybody understood. So this is what I used. This this was the tool, the tactic yes. <laughs> that, that I used because it was, it was just such a, a good thing. And I would highly recommend that to anybody. I will link this down below. So if you guys want to get it and read it yourself, you can. I guess you normalized it, as some people okay. might say. Like right. you normalized that I didn't come from your body. So Sherry, share this story. I don't know. She told me this <laughs> like not too long ago. This story of when I came home from grade school. This is when we lived in Florida. I asked like where my real parents were, or like why did they not want me? And then there's the time where I thought I wasn't Chinese yeah. anymore. There, there were a couple, a couple <laughs> different things, and that was probably in the first, second grade, maybe once when you were in Ohio. I can't really remember which one was like kindergarten, first or second grade. Okay. But there were just a few times when things would come up. Yeah. Because even though you were firmly ingrained in the fact that you knew you were adopted. Yeah. But there were still some other questions that would come up, and we were always very open about answering any of those questions. But sometimes little kids don't quite understand what adoption means, <laughs> um, especially other little kids that haven't read this book. Right. So um, once you came home, and I don't even remember what the context was, but you just said, well, you know, when I used to be Chinese, I didn't do that. <laughs> And I'm like, what do you mean when you used to be Chinese? I think it was at Celebration School. I don't know. It's like, we need to have a little chat because you're still Chinese. <laughs> you're still Chinese. You are an American citizen, mm -hmm. but you are of Chinese descent. So you will always be Chinese. <laughs> but that, that was kind of funny. But the one that I really remember was somebody at school. Yeah. Somebody at school told you that when you were an orphan, if you came from an <laughs> orphanage and you were an orphan, that meant that your, your parents had died. So you wanted to know what had happened. That happened at Celebration School. That, I think so. What had happened yeah. to them? Why mm -hmm. they had died? And I, I said, don't know who it would be. It, it, it was. It I was know real it was a long time It was a ago. little boy. I remember. I can't remember who, which little boy it was in your class. But you said your parent, her parents had died, and so you wanted to know if they had missed you and if they right. died. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, first of all, you know, I'm your parent, and I don't know if they died. I don't think so. Uh, because being in an orphanage is that doesn't necessarily mean that this little boy's probably watched little orphan Annie and has the wrong idea about orphanages in China and you said well he knew that he said he knew so you were giving me some pushback about parents being dead if you were in an orphanage so being the kind kind person I am I said well has he ever been to China <laughs> and you said I don't think so and I said well I have and you have um has he ever been orphaned and you said no and I said well then he doesn't know anything about it we know all about it but all we know is that there were two people that created a baby and that baby was you what happened to them after that, we don't know. They're probably still alive. We don't know that. And we'll never know whatever happened to them, where they are, if they had more children. We're not going to know any of that information. But just being in an orphanage does not necessarily mean in China that your parents are dead. Yes. We were at a public pool. And Alex was probably two, maybe three. And I was in the pool with her and she was standing there. There's this little boy. It's always like little boys that do this. I guess. This little boy know. walked by and he looks at her. He stares at her for a minute. <laughs> and he walks away. And then he like swims back over and he looks at her and looks up at me. This happened in Ohio, right? It did. This yeah. was in Ohio. And you know, Ohio is pretty white. It, is, so. it was very white. The pool anyway. we were in, the area we were in was very white. And so... He's like looking at her. And finally, like about the third time, he comes, swims around, you know, and stops. He looks at her, looks up at me, and he goes, What's wrong with her eyes? <laughs> <laughs> and I said, I laugh every time. Nothing. Why? And he looks at me, looks at her, and he goes, Well, can she see? <laughs> and I said, Yes. I said, Her eyes look different than your eyes, don't they? And he goes, Yeah. And I said, Well, that's because she's Chinese. He goes, Oh, what's her name? <laughs> you know, 
name is Alex. <laughs> oh. So he goes away, he swims away, and he comes back with these other kids. He brings this whole group of little kids over and gathers them around Alex and points to her and says, hey, that's Alex. She's Chinese, but she can see. Oh my <laughs> gosh. That's a really good story. No, and it, was, it was just very funny. And then Sometimes. we always get the, is she your grandma? Yeah. Same little boy. Same oh, little wait, boy. really? Yeah. Same little boy in the pool comes around a little bit later, mm -hmm. looks up at me and goes, are you her grandma? <laughs> he looks up at me and says, are you your grandma? And I said, no, but I think I hear your mom calling you. <laughs> <laughs> I had a question for you. Okay. So do you ever remember a time when it just suddenly hit you that you were adopted? That you look different than everybody else and you look different than everybody in your family and all your oh, that's friends. that's a good question. Was there ever any time you went, oh, yeah, I am adopted. I hmm. wondered that. There's some times that I do think that, but I don't focus on it. Like, even if it does dawn on me that like, oh, I am different, I don't see myself as different. And I think that's the, the key where, I don't know, maybe you can take from this. If you see yourself as different and if you focus on what's different about you, you're going to be different. For my cousin's wedding, for example, like I'm going to be the only Chinese person. Sometimes I don't even remember that I'm number one adopted or number two Chinese because it doesn't dawn on me that I am that. So when someone's like, oh, where are you from? I'm like, oh, Columbus, Ohio. And then I'm like, they're like, no, where are you really from? And I'm like, oh. I was born in China, but then, and then I had to go into my spiel, which if you don't know my spiel, then I'll link that video up in the cards or something. But like, hi, I'm adopted when I was one. I have two gay moms, but I'm not gay. You know, that spiel. We were checking into, when we lived in Ohio, we were coming here on vacation and we checked in at Old Key West. Mm -hmm. And the person driving the little golf cart to take us to our room was Asian. Alex and I are like in the back seat and he turns around and he goes, oh, where is she from? And I said, we're from Ohio. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, oh, okay, well, uh, well, she looks Asian. I'm like, oh, you mean, you mean what country is she from? It sounds weird, but like I see myself more as white because I have been around white people more, I guess. But also too, I remember, and this is something you recently shared with me about one of the shaman sister parents. Yes, yeah, so one of, one of the moms in the shaman reunion group um, shared with me once that she never really wanted to focus on her daughter being Chinese and she was white or she was adopted and mm -hmm. other kids were not because she wanted her to feel like she was uh, more the same and less different right. than everybody else. She wanted to focus on those differences. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think that's my mindset. And I didn't even know mm -hmm. that. And Sherry just shared that with me. I'm like, I think I've been thinking that all along. So that was really like a profound thing when I found that out. Cause like, I don't focus on like what's different, but also I'm just gonna throw in here really quick that um, I went to a dance studio and there was a lot of Filipinos. So I was surrounded by more Asian people and it did feel more like community and like I wasn't a different person or like outcast. So I think that really helped, but I don't know how I would feel if I grew up in a predominantly like white neighborhood in Ohio. Like, I don't know how I would feel, but I can tell you that um, I went to a very like diverse high school. If you haven't seen the video, I'll link it down below. I went to an art school and then I also went to a dance studio where there was more Asians. So I did get a taste of like more, seeing more of my Asian people, I guess. And we did start know. out when you were little and mm -hmm. we were in Ohio with taking you to events, families with children from China. Mm -hmm. And they always did events. Um, they started like Saturday groups. You could learn Mandarin. You could do Chinese arts and crafts. And they had all, all kinds of things to help connect kids to their Chinese culture. And <laughs> we went to a few of the events and you just never liked it. I never so liked it. <laughs> she was never. I don't know. The only thing you liked was walking in the dragon parade and getting the money in the red <laughs> envelope at the end. Hey, you <laughs> that know, was the only some thing. things never change, right? <laughs> <laughs> that was the only thing you ever really liked about yeah. any of those events we went to. I don't so. know, but I'm glad that you didn't force upon my culture because it's not I don't identify with it I mean that's different for everybody but like for me I just didn't and I'm glad that you didn't force it so moving on I want to ask my mom what is her advice on telling your child or children that they are adopted well I think that probably honesty is the best policy 
just from the get-go from the start yes absolutely from yeah. the very start um, you don't want them like 16 and then you're like sweetie happy birthday but your biological parents are not here I mean maybe not traumatic I, I don't know yeah. but um, I think that just being honest up front and living with it because it's part of who you are yeah and where you came from and secrets always come out i know a long time ago kids who were adopted their records were sealed if you did a domestic adoption your records were sealed the birth mothers were told kids would never be able to get in touch with them and when you're adopting like that usually more than just you and the child would know or just mm -hmm. you and whoever the adults are but other people in the family know what's going on so you know eventually uncle joe or somebody you know has a couple of drinks and slips out your kids adopted i could see those things happening within a family that if it was kept a secret it could be hurtful and i also think too i just have like two things on my mind number one is if your kid has any questions, always tell them what you know. Like you've always told me what you know. And they've always been supportive. If I want to find my birth parents, they would be supportive of that. I mean, I don't have the bank account nor the dreaming desire to find my birth parents, but they were never like, we're insulted. You know, like some people could be. No, I, I think it'd be very interesting actually. Yeah. yeah. Um, if there was a way to do it, but. Right. In the 90s, if you were abandoning your daughters on the streets, then you probably <laughs> wanted to get away and not have any record of that and yeah. probably could not be found. Right. I mean, it's not like you're just going to a small town to find a woman who gave birth 25 years ago. You're going to a country of billions of people. Yeah. If I ever like get to some level of success where I have like financial stability and like I have funding or whatever, then I think that'd be a really cool series to do like on my YouTube channel or just like something like that. I think it'd be really cool. But also I'd need a really good translator because <laughs> I am nowhere near close to <laughs> Communication. It'd be interesting like, to see what they look like. Yes. And to get medical history. Yeah. I mean, but then again, sometimes I'm like, I'm okay with not knowing my medical history. Cause like, you don't want to in your mind know that like True. cancer runs and then you're like paranoid the rest of your life. I always look at the positive sides of most everything. So I'm like, okay, maybe the stuff that I don't know is better. So do you have any other tips on parents telling their kids that they're adopted? Be honest, answer all the questions, and you know your child better than anybody else. So get to know your child, get to know how they handle the information, anything that's different, but just always be upfront with them about everything. Yeah, that's a good thing to follow. By the way, you're adopted. I know. <laughs> okay, yeah, and for all the people who think that like I'm mean to her and she's mean to me or whatever, I don't know, it's just our relationship. Like we're a bunch of like smart ass type of people. We are. Even Valerie. Oh, we're, we're proud of that. Yeah, we're, we're going to do a mom tag pretty soon. <laughs> I don't know, man. You don't want to see them when they start drinking because that's a little hey, scary. Hey, hey. We, we are proud of our oh, Miss Smarty Pants. She's a good Smarty Pants. All right. So I think that is going to be it for this video. If you have any other questions, make sure to leave them in the comments down below. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Do it for her. And we have more videos coming. Don't forget to subscribe. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye. Bye.